There is a reason that you do not have the body of your dreams. And what is the reason? Well, let me tell you the biggest myth that you've probably fallen victim to during your workout journey. And that is that there is one magic workout routine that's gonna get you to where you wanna be in your fitness journey. And honestly, that is just not true whatsoever. It couldn't be further from the truth. Here's the problem. Every single person has different things that they're wanting to achieve when it comes to working out. Whether that be weight loss, muscle gain, or even just gaining strength overall. There's literally a million reasons why someone might work out. So to make your life just a little bit easier, I've gone ahead and put together a framework to figure out what health goals you'd like to achieve, how to achieve them, and example workout routines for each and every one of them. This is going to be a video jam-packed with information, and it's very different from my usual vibe of video I go through where it's super entertaining. And it's going to be a little bit different from my normal vibe of video, but I've gotten a ton of questions on this, so I think you'll enjoy. This is also taking a lot of time and research, so if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, that would be much appreciated. And let me emphasize this. The goal here with this video isn't for you to just find a workout routine that I provided for you and follow that. The goal here is for me to give you the knowledge that you need in order to be able to create a workout routine whenever you need without having to rely on someone else to do it. Reason number one, someone might work out, weight loss. So what is the how? How do you achieve weight loss? The biggest thing that is needed in order to lose weight is going to be a calorie deficit, however you want to achieve this. This just means burning more calories than your body is actually taking in. Whenever your body is doing this and doesn't have as many calories coming in as it needs to burn in order to live and function, it is still going to need to get that energy from somewhere, right? So what it's going to do is actually burn the fat in your body to use as fuel to keep your energized throughout the day. It's not just going to leave you less energized and not let your body do the function it needs to have. It's going to find that fuel somewhere. So it's going to use that fat reserve as that fuel. A general rule of thumb for this is you need about a 500 calorie deficit. So there's different calculators online and stuff for you to calculate how much you actually need to be eating calorie wise. And then you could use a app to track such as like my fitness pal or something it's completely free also a big myth that i want to clear up spot fat loss is not a thing there's no such thing as being like oh you, i want to lose fat in my arms but I don't really care about anywhere else. That's impossible. You can't choose where your body is going to use the energy from your fat from. That's just not gonna happen. It's gonna take you from wherever the frigate wants to, and honestly, it's probably gonna be the last place you wanted to take it from. So you're gonna have to lose fat either everywhere or nowhere. So diet is going to be a huge part of this, and this isn't something that we're gonna be talking about in this video, but if you want me to talk about it at some point on this channel, I'm more than happy to, but diet is gonna be a huge thing as we were talking about with the 500 calorie deficit. But for your actual workout routine itself, a zone two heart rate is definitely the best place to be at when it comes to burning fat in your body. Now you might be asking, Carson, what is a zone 2 heart rate? How do I know if I'm in a zone 2 heart rate? A lot of the time you're going to need some sort of tracker, such as this whoop band I got right here on my wrist, or something like an Apple Watch, whatever you want. There's a million ways to track your heart rate now. But in order to calculate if you're at a zone 2 heart rate, it's 65 to 75% of your max heart rate is going to be your zone 2 heart rate, which is the best for fat burning. In order to calculate your max heart rate, it's going to be 220 beats per minute. BPMs subtracted by your age. So for example, for me, my max heart rate since I'm 21 would be 199 because that's 220 minus 21, 199. It's also very important in my opinion to try to minimize the break in between the sets that you're doing. So this could be factored into your workout routine as a whole. This could be some sort of extended light cardio you're gonna be doing. Or if you do wanna do some sort of weight training, it would be like a Tabata or something where you're really being active the whole time. And Tabata is actually the method I'm gonna be using in my workout routine. I created. You can also do something like a cardio in the morning. So this could be some sort of walk and then doing a weight training in the evening if you still want to be putting on muscle while losing weight simultaneously. So down in the description of this video, I'm going to link all of the workout routines I created absolutely free for you to take a look at. You can reference it whenever you want. It'll always be here. Some of the main highlights I have on this weight loss workout routine is going to be a 20 minute walk every single morning. This could just be a light walk, but trying to get your heart rate into that zone two. And the other main thing that I've listed here, which we talked about is following a diet plan with a 500 calorie deficit. I have three different workouts, which are Tabata workouts. So it's going to be 45 seconds on of working. This could be doing push-ups, jumping jacks, and then 15 seconds off. And you're going to be doing seven sets of this whole workout. For these workouts I have on here for these weight loss journey, you don't have to be wanting to lose weight in order to do these. These are great cardio building exercises, which everyone should be doing cardio. I don't care if you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to build muscle, you should be doing cardio. So if you want a good cardio, 
cardio workout. Take a look at these. You don't need any weights for them, anything. You could do these at home. Super, super easy. Reason number two, someone might be working out is for muscle gain, which is personally the reason I started working out. So this one hits very close to home. To keep it simple, really you gain muscle in your body by working them out, getting these little tiny micro tears in your muscle fibers themselves. Your body will go in and repair those muscle fibers. But while it repairs it, it's going to add a little bit of extra muscle fiber to it, which will cause an increase in muscle mass in that area, making you look hot and sexy. Science with Carson, baby. So what is needed in order to gain muscle? This is something I like to call the big three. Sufficient diet, calories, sleep. And this is obviously assuming that you've worked out hard enough in order to actually tear the muscle. If you don't have enough calories in your body, protein, or getting the vitamins and nutrients you have in your body along with enough sleep, your body's not going to have time to go in and heal those muscles, which means you're going to be feeling horrible. You're going to have these micro tears in your muscle just sitting there and you're not going to get the benefits you're working for. So you're going to do this hard workout with no results if you're not focusing on the stuff in the back end, which is what a lot of people miss out on and is leading to a big lack in gains. So workouts in this muscle gain area, which are typically called hypertrophy workouts, are typically in about the 8 to 12 rep range. Sometimes they go up to about the 15 rep range, but I'd say 8 to 12 reps per set is ideal. And you're going to need to push your body freaking hard for this. I don't want no stopping even though you got a few more left in the tank. That's not going to help you build muscle. The last few reps on every set are the ones that actually build muscle. So if you're skipping out before you hit those last few sets, you're not going to be gaining no muscle. Unfortunately, you got to work hard for this. You literally just want to be pushing your body to the limits each and every set. Leave it all on each set. Act like your life depends on each set. And if you do that, you're going to be looking good, my boy. So doing things like drop sets, supersets, and things like that are going to be super good because you're going to be literally pushing yourself to the limit. If you're not wincing in pain while working out, you're not doing it hard enough in my opinion. Push yourself. So I got a three-day push-pull legs routine linked in the comments, linked in the description, sorry, of this video as well. It's only three days, but you could repeat it if you want to do more days. I have other workout routines with the hypertrophy stuff in mind on my page just because that's what I do. So you could go back and look through some of my other videos. I have a ton of videos posted about this kind of workouts. These workouts really aren't too long. These ones are probably like 45 minutes a day, so you definitely have time to do them. But remember, when you're doing these, push yourself very hard and don't skip out on leg day. I promise you. The ladies love it. Finally, reason number three, someone might be working out. Strength gain. Another reason I personally started working out. I was a scrawny little boy, so weight loss wasn't a huge thing to me, but these last two, they were my life. How do you actually occur strength gain? How does one get stronger from working out? Essentially, what you're doing is you're conditioning the muscles to become accustomed to lifting the increase in weight. And by doing this, you're adapting the muscles, joints, tendons, bones in your body to be able to hold that weight. And yes, it's literally affecting all of those different things in your body. Because let's think of it like this. Sure, your muscles are going to get bigger, but you're not going to be able to see the change in your bones or joints or anything like that. But do you think, let's say whatever your max bench is right now, do you think your elbow or shoulder joints would be able to handle a 600 pound bench press right now? Let's say even your muscles were strong enough to do it, but do you think your joints would hold up? Likely not. And sure, the muscles connecting to your around your joints will help strengthen them a little bit, but it's going to be all of these things together that actually make you enabled to be stronger. Strength gain is often done in specific areas and done in compound movements. So for example, the main compound movements, the big three are squats, deadlifting, and bench. So bench will work your shoulders, triceps, chest. Squats will work your legs and glutes. Deadlifts will work your back, legs. Essentially, compound movements are just exercises that work multiple muscle groups in the same movement. So things like a bicep curl wouldn't be a compound movement because you're isolating your bicep and only working that, but a compound movement will work multiple muscle groups. So what is needed in order to get the benefits of strength gain? A lot of the time, if you want to be really, really efficient in the strength gain and don't really care about too much else, a higher body fat percentage is kind of ideal because it's going to help your body recover a little bit better and be able to handle a higher load. And obviously that's not too high. Like I'm not saying go get a 40% body fat percentage in order to lift more weight. I'm talking about like 15 to 20% instead of like the 3 to 10% that most bodybuilders are sitting at. Good diet is also a must when you're trying to increase your strength. Kind of along with the muscle gain side of things, your body's going to need that time to recover. Otherwise, you're not going to be fully ready for that next heavy lifting day. So you're not going to see the benefits. Most people are often doing rep ranges in the 1 to 5 range. Super low reps, high weight and they're also doing a high rest in between each of the sets and they're also doing a longer rest period in between each of the sets anywhere from three to five minutes sometimes to make sure that their body is fully recovered
recovered and ready for that next set so they can get the most out of it. A lot of the time, they're also doing a lot of sets per exercise. They're doing sometimes three to 10 sets of squats, for example. Sure, a lot of those may be warm up sets, but they are doing a high quantity of exercises in those movements because they want to perfect their form, technique, literally every little thing that goes into it so they can get stronger. So I have a six day push pull legs routine strength exercise built out. This one does have a little bit of muscle gain built into it. I'm not focusing super heavy on the compound movements. For example, if you're wanting to compete, probably wouldn't be the best way to go. But if you're trying to build a lot of your muscle, look good and be strong while you're at it, this is definitely a good routine for you. It's going to be similar to a hypertrophy or a muscle gaining workout. It's just a little bit on the lower rep range side of things. But I will say this, the most important thing of any workout routine and seeing any results at all is just starting in the first place. Literally just start. Start slow and I promise you that your future self is going to thank you for it because I know I have. If you learned even one single thing on this video, please subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram. It's going to be right here. It helps me out a ton and it allows me to do a lot more things like this. I love you all. Peace.